Whether you're a returning player from the franchise or a newcomer to the series altogether, I'm sure those of you who missed the last beta are excited or curious to try out the second beta next week on the 22nd for Monster Hunter World. Yes, soon you'll be able to hunt monsters in beautiful HD in epic battles of attrition, and you can even team up together with friends to take the bees down. It'll be a glorious Christmas for all PS4 owners, but before all that magic happens, you gotta learn the ropes or brush up on the new changes, and that's where I come in since the beta demo does diddly squat to kickstart you on the mechanics and whatnot, which might negatively affect your first impression. This is not an introduction to the series, but rather just a quick start guide to make the beta experience better for you for the four days it's up. I'm Project, and welcome to my short, unofficial tutorial on the beta that we'll be able to play from the 22nd to the 26th this month. For newcomers, Monster Hunter is a bloated franchise with lots of little things thrown at you at once that isn't really explained that great. Despite World's much modernization and quality of life changes, at least for the beta, it's still pretty hard to wrap your head around everything from combat to weapon choice to items or the UI. So, this is basically a video explaining things you should do, or care for, and things you should probably ignore in the beta. First things first, I know you're excited to hop in and just play a quest, but really, I urge everyone that hasn't played the beta yet that's going to play it this time, even if you're a returning player that missed the previous demos, to go in the training room and learn one weapon combo at least to start. Not only to get used to the controls a bit, but also to know some new moves each weapon possesses. Monster Hunter is not like a Souls game where you can easy lock on and mash R1 and be fine. It's really more technical combat of positioning, timing, and just using good combos to deal the most amount of damage to certain body parts of the monsters. This is made more confusing in the beta since they give you access to all 14 weapons at once, which they've traditionally always done, but it makes the choice of picking weapon a difficult and confusing one for a new player. So for new players, especially if you think the combat is slow, I recommend picking up the dual swords, long sword, switch axe, or the bow to start. Dual blades are probably the easiest to learn with high DPS due to demon mode which is easily activated. Long sword builds up a gauge when attacking below the player's stamina to which if near full, you can use a spirit slash combo to make your sword stronger with various glow colors on the sword gauge icon to indicate the level it's at. White being the first stage, yellow the second, and then red the final one, each raising your damage. Switch Axe is slightly more complicated since you'll be alternating between its two modes. Think Bloodborne trick weapons, use Axe to build up sword meter gauge, and then go into sword mode to deal lots of damage. Once that depletes, you switch back to Axe and rinse and repeat. And lastly is Bow for a ranged weapon if you want to try ranged. It has less ammo types than the other ranged weapons, and generally the main thing you want to do is your charge shots after applying power coating, and then spamming Dragon Piercer whenever the monster is stationary from a fall or a trap. So these are the weapons I would recommend to pick up for a new player. Learn a combo or two, and then you can attempt the first beginner quest. It will make for a better experience if you know some common moves going in, trust me. Next up, do not use the lock-on, it's straight trash. Manually use the right thumbstick to control the camera, it's simple enough to do. The lock-on in this game makes your camera go crazy at times if you are too close, or if you switch to a certain body part and they move out of view. It's not a good experience, so stick to manual. When you start a quest for the first time, you'll be bombarded by a slew of items, both ones you can use and from the environment itself. There's also a radio menu system that allows you to fast use these items rather than shuffling through them. So I recommend immediately going into the options and changing the radio style to click rather than hover. When I first played the beta, the radio system was annoying since I use items randomly sometimes because of the hover features, so I definitely recommend switching to click. If you want the old Monster Hunter way of just holding L1 and then pressing left or right buttons to pick items without the radio system, you can change the Type 3 in the settings. This also lets you move the camera when changing ammo if you're using ranged weapons, which isn't possible if you have the radio system on. For items, there's actually a slew of good ones to use, but there's also just way too many of them they gave you that are irrelevant. New players won't know what to do with the junk, so the items I recommend to care about are Max Potion, Mega Potion, whetstones, and lastly after you familiarize yourself with these items you can start using items that can help you stun the monster like shock trap or paralysis knives. For the knives, you have to equip them with square and then you'll have to use the slinger mechanic to actually throw them, so remember that. That's one thing that was confusing at first. You don't just use them, you have to, you have to equip them and then use the slinger thing to shoot them at the monster. Whetstones are for when your sharpness goes down. It's a small meter that displays your weapon's sharpness below your stamina and health. 
Green sharpness slightly boosts your damage, while yellow loses your damage and makes you prone to bouncing off monsters' parts more, which deals even less damage when you do so, so definitely make sure to have green sharpness at all times. All the items all take some time to use, and you have to sheathe your weapon to use them unless you're using sword and shield. So get used to this mechanic and pick a safe place to use an item. You can always cancel an item using a roll if you're about to be hit, but things like potions will be used up so be careful. Speaking of potions, you can run while using a potion by clicking and holding the left thumbstick, use it to get out of a monster's attack range, I've seen a lot of people from streams or footage where they just walk instead of run. There's actually even more items you can obtain, some from the blue chest in each camp. This is usually used for standard quests in the main games with free items supplied by the research group, but now there's also items in your tent at the base camps. Pitfall Trap and Flash Pods being the most useful, the latter especially good against Rathalos which can make him fall when he's flying. So for that battle I recommend picking those items up. Speaking of tents though, you can also change your gear here if you want. If you open a map, you can even fast travel to the various tents whenever you're outside of combat. This is useful in saving time traversing the map, which speaking of time, each quest for the beta is 20 minutes. Why is it this short? Not even I know, <laughs> but the full game should be 50 minutes usually with only very special quests being shorter. So that's probably my biggest complaint for the beta on the quest being too short. There's a super tiny clock on the upper left of the screen, but it's nearly useless. Just open your map to see how much time you have left. Scout Flies, a new feature for the series, should aid you in fighting the monster the first couple times. You can upgrade these by picking up tracks and clues from the map. However, eventually you'll just learn where monsters spawn and you can avoid this process. And that should be it as far as explaining the HUD, option changes, and the items you should use. Make sure to eat at the base camp for a boost in stats, the first being the best for kill times, which grants attack on medium. You should do this nearly every hunt. You do have some freedom for mix and matching armors this time, and you can change them either in the tent or from the main menu before you embark on a quest. I forgot the armor names, but I recommend just picking all attack, or if you're having trouble with monsters, all defense, depending if you're struggling. All the other effects are near irrelevant for the beta besides Mount Master and maybe Critical Eye, which is critical chance, but critical mainly benefits faster hitting weapons like dual blades or sword and shield. Gilly Mantles are a new item in this game that you have to equip, and you definitely want to equip the Rock Steady Mantle. It's so broken, it makes a lot of things that would stun you not do so, and it also even makes you take less damage. And the Health Booster is nice too as a secondary option, especially in multiplayer. But all this stuff I'm saying is a part of the whole micromanaging of items thing. Eventually you get used to shuffling all these things around, but I know when you first start out it's all confusing, so hopefully I narrowed it down to the best ones to worry about. And one more thing, when a monster sleeps, the very first hit you do will do boosted damage. However, the actual best way to deal the most amount of damage from this effect is to use large barrel bombs on the monster's weak spot. So what I recommend to do is not hit the monster at all, use your large barrel bombs and place them near the monster's head while it's sleeping and then use a slinger or ranged attack to blow the bombs up and you'll do a lot of damage which will aid in killing the monster faster. So don't forget this, this is a crucial tactic in multiplayer. Don't be the noob that runs in and attacks a sleeping monster when your buddies are trying to set bombs up. And that's about it for my tips, I truly hope you enjoy the beta, and for multiplayer it should be a blast. Keep in mind though, the beta will be open to all PS4 players now, so the servers might be a bit more strict the first day or two, so I recommend playing solo for a bit until all that settles down. Completing each quest for the first time gets you rewards for the actual real game, so make sure to complete each quest once if you plan to pick this game up. If you have any questions, I'll be live streaming the beta as soon as it hits here on YouTube, where you can ask and I can answer questions in real time, and can also maybe learn a thing or two from watching, wink wink. <laughs> but anyways, thanks for watching, I hope this video is useful to you guys. If you liked the video, put a large barrel bomb on that like button. Comment down below if you're new to the series, is next week's beta going to be the first time you're playing? And if you already played, did you enjoy the last beta? Sound off in the comments. And of course, subscribe for more Monhun Epicness. Monster Hunter! Monster!